It is my distinct pleasure today to present our community's first Lifetime Achievement Award. One of our goals here at Next is to connect the North Bay startup community's future with our past. And so much of the incredible history of our local startup community can be traced back to the entrepreneurial spirit of one leader, Mr. Don Green. Mr. Green lived and launched companies in both Marin and Sonoma counties. He founded his first telecom startup in 1968 in Novato and later co-founded Petaluma-based OptiLink in 1987. This company in many ways gave birth to the North Bay's telecom valley. He later founded the iconic Advanced Fiber Communications, AFC, which went public in 1996. Mr. Green passed away in June of last year at the age of 90 after leaving an incredible legacy in this community across startups, philanthropy, and music. In establishing MSIV's Lifetime Achievement Award for service to the North Bay startup community, it was only appropriate that we name this award after Mr. Don Green and award the first year's honor to its namesake. I'm proud to be joined today by Mr. Green's daughter, daughter Rebecca, Rebecca Green Birdsall, and John Webley, Mr. Green's longtime startup collaborator and friend, to accept this award on his behalf and speak to his incredible legacy. <laughs> Rebecca and John, this award reads, Don Green Lifetime Achievement Award for service to the North Bay startup community, 2022 presented to Don Green for his unparalleled legacy in building iconic companies and inspiring a generation of entrepreneurs across the North Bay, North Bay Next, May 17th, 2022, San Rafael, California. And I'm excited now to ask John and Rebecca to say a few words about Mr. Green so we all can get to know him better today. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. I, I won't bore you, but um, I'm going to try and focus on all the stories I heard today because the story is always the same and they're all repeating over and over again. So it's great to hear the enthusiasm and the energy of the young people starting here. I, uh, as you've heard, Don moved to San Francisco first in 1960 to start uh, Lynch Communications. Um, that was a telecommunications network which was entirely analog, so none of this digital stuff, right? There was no computers were around. There was no way to do anything digitally. It was all done with analog. And he worked there from 1960 to 69 at Lynch. Uh, an interesting aside, in 1985 when I took my first job in the US, I started at Lynch and I saw Don's names on a lot of the schematics and I wondered who this guy was. At that point I had no idea who he was. But uh, Lynch moved to Reno, Nevada and um, like I've heard today, that causes a change. And he didn't want to move his family to Reno, Nevada. He liked San Francisco. So he decided to start his own company and he moved up to Nevada over here where he started digital telephone systems. And that was the first digital communication system. It was a PBX and it switched signals uh, for, for companies. And he stuck with that for many years. He was there from 69 to 1985 at Harris DTS and, and the, in that parallel time I was at Lynch and in other places. And then we hooked up in 85 at OptiLink, yet sold the company Harris uh, to um, uh, digital telephones to Harris and had decided to start another company called OptiLink in Petaluma. And like so many of your stories, I remember they sitting on a camp chair in a single office next to a cheesecake factory where the smell of the cheesecake overwhelmed us. And I thought, is this guy for real? Is he really gonna start a company here? And he talked to me about the product he wanted to start. And I said to my wife, what do you think? Because she was by sort of my counselor in chief. And she said, look, uh, she didn't like where she was. And this was as good an opportunity as any. So let's take it. So we, we picked up the kids and moved to Petaluma next to the Cheesecake Factory. And that started Optilink. Now, not all startups are successful. Harris was, or the digital telephone was mod modestly successful. I think he sold it for 70 million. Um, we started Optilink. And as a product, that product is probably the most successful telecommunications product in American history. It had 60 million circuits, subscribers, homes connected to it at the time we sold it to a digital switch. Um, but we sold it for, uh, I think, 300 million. So not very successful. Um, after that, we went on and then we left and we started Advanced Fiber together. 
and that was a killer company. It doubled in size every year for 10 years in a row until it, it was named the fastest growing company in the Forbes 500. In 1999, when I left, it was six billion on the, on the public stock exchange. Um, on the side, Don got involved, and this is Don had his fingers everywhere. He started Serent, and we sold that to Cisco, I think, for 12 billion. Um, then we, then Don decided to retire. He, he, at that point, he said, "John, you run the company, and I'll sit on your board." And so we did. We started Turin. Um, that wasn't very successful because that was right around the time when the stock market crashed in 2001 with the 9/11 towers and the fallout of tech. We eventually managed to rescue that company. I recall at the time when I opened the doors of Turin with Don, we were given a check for 300 million in venture funding to give you the size and scope of how much money can flow quickly. That's the worst thing you can do if, if I was going to tell you one lesson that I learned from Don is never take too big a check because it makes you lazy. So we had the demand from the venture capital community to hire five engineers a day and then we would be the biggest company in the history of mankind. And I had hired about 800 engineers in three months. I had five HR ladies hiring full time. And in 2001, we laid off 800 people in Petaluma. But if you ever want to learn a painful lesson in life is hire so fast that you have no corporate culture, you cannot keep the team together, every person you hire thinks he's God's gift to man, and they all have their own product idea. So to try and engineer in an environment like that was a disaster. We did sell it eventually to Dell for 700 million, but that was a tough road. At that, at that point, I think Don and me said, okay, we've had it with tech. And then we said, what should we do? And that's when we started moving a little bit into what Rebecca is going to talk about, which are more socially good enterprises. I started a water company with Don, and he served on my board until the very, very end. And until the very end, his mind was as sharp as a tack, and he was very interested in what, uh, what we were doing every day. He would meet with me privately to go through things. He had an active and a keen interest till, until the day he died in technology and what it could do for mankind. And, and the it, it, latter part of his years, I think, really spent a lot of time on things Rebecca is going to tell you about. Thank you very much. So I first want to thank you so much for um, giving this award to my father and naming it after him. He would love this. He loved business. He loved entrepreneurs. And he in, um, both in, enjoyed starting businesses, he enjoyed running businesses, and he enjoyed investing in businesses. And um, so what I'd like to do is just take a moment to say, what did he do with the success that he had? Um, because I think it really... He took a lot of the skills that um, he used in running businesses to try to make a difference in the community. So um, the first thing he did was he made sure his children were comfortable, which is very nice of him, um, and that his grandchildren and great-grandchildren um, could receive excellent educations. And then he um, started a foundation with my mother and um, wanted to have the foundation that um, focused on the local community, so in Marin and Sonoma. And um, then he got involved in a really large project in Sonoma with Sonoma State University that focused on building what is now known as the Green Music Center which is a pretty extraordinary concert hall and um, recital hall. And I don't know if any of you have seen it or witnessed it. Um, it's a, a major attribute um, that has added to the cultural life of, um, of the North Bay. Um, he also uh, invested in um, lots and lots of startups, um, including the water company that John is talking about. But he wanted to make a difference with his money. And um, he spent the last 25 years of his life looking around, imagining what, how the world could be a better place, both culturally um, as well as technology, from a technology perspective. He was totally engaged in life until um, the last day of his life when he was on vacation in Mexico and preparing to um, visit a tequila factory. So he lived an incredible life. He loved this country. He loved California, and he loved Marin and Sonoma in particular. And he would be very, very honored by this award. Thank you.